All right, so let's talk about the PGM, shall we? The PGM. What is the PGM? The PGM is the Papyri Greek Magica, also known as the Greek Magical Papyri. The PGM is a book that was discovered a couple of years ago, and it was translated, and it is a ancient text of Egyptian, Greek, and I believe it's Jewish and proto-Christian magic all syncretized into one book. There is lots of spells regarding Aphrodite, there is a lot of spells from Hecate, there is a lot of spells directly involving Greek god names, and a lot of Egyptian as well that is phonetically translated into Greek. There is also a lot of very bizarre Christian symbolism, the Steel of Aeon, the previous topic of the video. You know, go check the video I did last time on the Steel of Aeon for more on the Steel of Aeon. Has a reference to the angels being the servants of Helios, which is kind of interesting in and of itself. Now, there are three major rituals from the PGM that we need to talk about. And the first one is the Bornless Rite, which I talked about at the end of the Banishing Ritual, or the Banishing Rituals video. The Steel of Aeon, which I have an entire video on, literally the last video I did, was, or the video before this, was a video on the Steel of Aeon. And the final one is a prayer to Selene to enhance almost any spell. This is on page 90 of the Betts translation. It is a useful spell to just have in your back pocket as kind of a preliminary. Now, there's a couple elephants in the room that I need to talk about, about the PGM. First off, there is a lot of... Some of these rituals are going to require animal parts. And some people may or may not think that we did that back in the day. And by we, I mean like humanity in general, not like in, in just kind of a broad sense. But... The value of life and, you know, of all life in the Western world has gone up. Our opinion of it has gone up. Our opinion of the lives of animals has gone up significantly. And uh, we tend not to do that in the West anymore. That is not the case when this book was written. This book is a compilation of multiple journals of notes and you're going to have a lot of animal sacrifice rituals in here, and you're going to have a lot of animal parts required. Like, you're going to need the fat of a boar at some points. You're going to need the liver of a cat. I don't know if that one's real, but I know the, the fat of a boar one is. You know, you're going to need the gall of a dove. That kind of thing. And um, for those of you who have a moral apprehension to this, uh, hi. Hi. I'm, I'm in the same room as you in this one, and I'm just going to say that uh, you should just avoid those or come up with a better alternative or for a good substitution, because animal sacrifice is not something we do that much in the West anymore. Very rarely do we do it. That being said, that was kind of the norm back in the day, and as such, there's going to be a lot of those in this book. Two, some of the rituals in this are jokes or blinds. Some of the rituals in this are going to be jokes or blinds. There is a spell to bind a lover to you, which uses said boar fat, and has you do some very un hygienic things with it in order to bind a lover to you. I can't talk about what those things are on YouTube, but rest assured that they're not good. A lot of those are jokes in or blinds, or really ancient forms of Viagra. And that is all I will say on that. The final thing I will say is that there are a disturbingly high number of love spells in the PGM, and there are a much higher number of love curses in the PGM, which, if you're a normal, modern occultist, should strike you as a little bit 
odd, but that is how things were done back in the day. There is a curse in this book to get someone to fall in love with you that invokes the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah along with three other cities in a very explicitly fucked up way. Between those is a bunch of prayers, and all of the magic is useful for things that are very much mundane. They are for healing. A lot of these could be considered ancient herbal remedies for medicine. There is a lot of prayers to different deities for different things, including things that you would not assume. There is a lot of magic in this book. And I'm just going to come out and say it. A lot of it is bad. A lot of it is not worth trying to replicate in modern day. However, this raises the question of how should we approach this book? Because this book is one, historical, two, we got the Bornless right out of it, so it's got to have more cool things in it, right? Well, and I did do a whole video on a ritual in the PGM, so how do how should we approach this book as modern occultists? That's quite simple. We should look at the rituals in the book, figure out the mechanics that the spell is functioning on, and we should recreate those mechanics in a more modern and possibly improved spell. Now, there's obviously some examples that you just fucking cannot replicate, like the Bornless Rite. You're not going to be able to top that. The only person who's come close is Crowley, and then in Lieber Samak, he fucks it up by... Do... We're not going to talk about Lieber Samak. I'm not fucking talking about Lieber Samak. TLDR and my thoughts on, like, half of Crowley's work is for every beautiful insanely divinely inspired thing that he does he then proceeds to jerk off all over it and just go full cocaine mode and it's terrible so that's all i'm talking about that's that's your crowley mention for this video but anyways you're not going to be able to tap the bornless right you're not going to be able to tap the steel veil and you might be able to rephrase and do a functional equivalent to the Celine prayer but you might as well use that one because it's got the egregoric effects of tradition behind it, which means that it's being powered by all of the people who came out before you and came before you in terms of using it for your ritual magic. So you might as well just add that on top. Like, just do, you know, you could do, like, meditation, uh, LBRP, LB, LIRH, Celine prayer, and that's what you would do. You would just slot that in. It slots in very nicely, and then you just add it as part of your rituals. And the reason why you would want a Selene prayer, by the way, the, the mechanics of that are quite simple. The mechanics of that are you are opening up the astral plane in a more direct way because Selene is the goddess of the moon, and the lunar powers are kind of the guardians of magic. You know, Thoth is considered a lunar spirit, Hikate has more of a modern thing, but Hikate is viewed as like a, a lunar goddess. I kind of disagree with that, uh, that correlation, but whatever, we'll go with it for now. Those kind of spirits and entities are really good for opening the gates, because if you open the gates before you do magic, you don't need to have your magic like rush through the gate, because the gate's already fucking open and it can go off to the races. You just go really quick and it speeds up magic and it speeds up the power and you don't need to worry about magic having roadblocks stopping it from manifesting. It's just really good. And this is kind of replicated in the modern rituals of the opening by Watchtower, which I'm still not talking about in this video because this is a PGM video. But things like that, the Selene prayer being kind of an opening type thing, which will enhance your magic, that is a thing you can use and mimic. You can go ahead and look at a lot of other rituals and you can modify them to suit your purpose. Now, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of really low effort rituals and there's a lot of very high effort rituals in this book. And I don't have time to cover, you know, uh, the Selene prayer is on page 90 and there's like 300 and like over 350 pages in this book. 
not including the forward, like, not including the beginning sections before we actually get to, like, the numbered pages. So, you know, it's it's kind of a whole thing that is very difficult. So the way that you should... So to recap, the three important rituals you need to know. The Bornless Rite, also known as the Steel of Jew, also known as the Headless Rite. The Steel of Aeon, also uh, you should do it before with, like, the Prayer of the Hidden Steel. I forgot to mention that in the Steel of Aeon video. There's a section before the Steel of Aeon of, like, the, the Hidden Steel, which if you do that one beforehand and then do the Steel of Aeon, it actually improves the Steel of Aeon's performance. I've not really done that before because I keep forgetting that that one exists because it's hidden from my, it's hidden from me in plain sight, basically. But it's good to know and it's good to keep in mind. And the third one is the Selene Prayer, which I have mentioned and used as an example in previous sections. Other than that, just take the rituals, look at the mechanics behind why they work, modify them to suit your needs, and write other write new rituals using the same underlying thought process behind the spell. Don't just go, oh, this ritual from the PGM looks really cool, but I don't want to sacrifice a goat on the altar, right? What you should instead do is figuring out why are they sacrificing the goat? What is the purpose here? What is the correspondences of the goat that we need, we need here? And can that be replicated through other methods? Now, I know that I believe there's a there's a culture that is like, yeah, you bake a cake of the animal and sacrifice that instead if you don't want to sacrifice like a live offering. I don't I remember hearing that at one point. I don't remember where that comes from, but that's a hypothetical solution. You could just make a cake. You could just sacrifice cake. Yeah, that's that's a acceptable thing to do in your ritual operations. You just put a fucking full size cake on your altar. Anyways, I've been Dave the Amateur Magus. Hope you got some enjoyment out of this and hope you've learned something. Uh, I have been Dave the Amateur Magus. Hope you're having a good day. If you're not having a good day, hope your day gets better.